the body politic actually is an old metaphor for a society or a religious group and uh, which is seen as a biological entity like a human body so uh, it's a sort of pun because i'm looking at society and the nation state particularly and also my own body as a political body and uh, placing myself inside this larger body politic well in most countries uh, the country is known as motherland except i think germany where it's called fatherland for some reason so um, so the land is seen of seen as a female figure uh, the earth is seen as a female figure normally in most mythologies and also in uh, nationalist narratives so there's britannia and there's various other figures uh, who represent uh, uh, the country or the state looking at in, in this particular uh, body of work i'm looking at uh, uh, the development of this uh, representation of uh, um, the the goddess of the country uh, one can say uh, the representation of the country uh, uh, through um, more than 100 years in india to the present day i took some of the the uh, nationalist images from uh, Uh, mainly Christopher Pinney's book i think it's called images of the nation and uh, some others are very popular images like uh, bharat mata of abhinandan tagore that we uh, studied in art school it's a very iconic image and there's this uh, calendar image of uh, by painted by jesu dos uh, which i've seen in a collection by patricia oberoi who's been collecting uh, popular material and uh, calendar paintings So these have been very, in a sense, canonical images, like that of Kali and uh, Bharat Diksha as well. Well, I've been doing that for a long time. Native women of South India was also like, uh, you know, taken. The images were taken. Reference images were taken from many different sources. So uh, yeah, I'm looking at. I mean, in a sense, uh, I'm looking at it as visual culture, uh, but I would not put them all on the same uh, register. and uh, i'm very I'm, i'm not only interested in uh, popular uh, culture as uh, some people uh, seem to imagine uh, especially those studying uh, uh, those from cultural studies i'm also very interested in high art and uh, i also i look at both analytically and critically i can say and i think both are impacting us uh, culturally so i got uh, interested in this whole area of eugenics when i saw this uh, major show in uh, new york university some years ago so uh, i didn't realize that some of the images anthropometric images that i used in uh, native of south india uh, were actually uh, connected to uh, this whole uh, uh, area of uh, eugenics which is about uh, uh, good genes or improving the genes of the human population and uh, was very popular in the early part of the 20th century and in fact uh, Uh, travel from america these ideas travel from america to germany where hitler actually took them up uh, to an extreme but what is very interesting is that i found that these uh, ideas from eugenics were being used across government policies and were supported by some of the most uh, uh, progressive people through the years for example nationalists and uh, you know feminists uh, the earlier uh, feminists Yes, I think in between after I stopped, uh, I mean, really, sort of pe- my sculptural kind of career, pe- sort of pe- petered work, sort of petered out in the mid '90s, in the '90s actually, and then uh, I think in 2008 I was invited for a, a sculpture workshop suddenly by a friend, and uh, I did a series of sculptures over there of books, and uh, so I had this idea of uh, uh, making another set of those books, but uh, that was very expensive, so. at that point i st- uh, started looking around and went to the archaeological museum in bangalore and where i saw this uh, vitrine with these uh, wonderful objects in them which were actually copper plate grants from the 15th and 16th centuries from south india so i thought there was a wonderful form and uh, in a way i worked with sculpture in a very different way because uh, it's very similar to the way i make uh, these photo performances or even my films where uh, actually i i take from uh, in some i recreate things and uh, you know we we'll use this no- notion of a pseudo archive so it's a kind of pseudo archive of objects which look like ancient um, you know archaeological uh, objects but in fact are very newly made and uh, then i uh, based it on these 
um, literally on these old copper grunts. But uh, I've actually uh, they have, but they're handmade. Each object is made by me with, with uh, some assistance from uh, my assistant and um, technical uh, you know help. But I've actually written all the scripts myself. And I did a lot of research there. Yeah. I mean, In fact, some people asked me last night at the opening, where did I collect all these objects from? You know, uh, because they they really thought they were old objects. I said I made them, you know, and mm -hmm. I took two years to make.